in the 1930s, especially 1933, a lot of these laws and regulations were put into place as a firewall between the banking industry and the stock market and commodities. These firewalls have been torn down, and anybody with a computer knows how important a firewall is. And now all of a sudden, free for all. Let's get some money, you know. Everybody's getting money, but who's getting the money? The fox has been in the hen house so long, the farmer thinks he has feathers, so he mistakes, he's mistaken for a chicken. And we're surprised when he eats the chicken. And yeah, we're surprised the farmer can't, you know, where's my chicken? <laughs> So, hey, and that's another reason I stepped up. I want to take my expertise, and I just have a, a regular education, five years of college, but it is based in business and economics. Now, my grandmother did say, Jim, you got a little common sense, and it might go a long way. So, Well, maybe if we de-emphasize the securities market, maybe we'll see small businesses come back. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. the heart of... Well, take economy. another look at Enron. You know, mm -hmm. this nation should have been outraged back when Enron hit, but a lot of people, you know, and, and it's, it gets back to the dumbing down of America. There's a lot of things coming in the future. A lot of things are coming in the future that we'll never have any say-so about that's coming from China that will affect our entire world economy. We have to gain in education. We have to push technology. And we have to push it K through, on through college. Your campaign emphasizes yeah. education. Very much. Are we, in, are we heading towards trouble? Do we? Oh, we're, we've been heading towards trouble for a long time. Uh, you know, we're testing these kids to death, but we're not educating them. Americans aren't going to graduate school for technical majors. No. You don't, you see a, mostly, a lot of times you see foreign students in those slots yeah. instead of Americans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the war on terror a little bit. What's your, what's your take there? Is that endless? Is there any way to... Well, let's put it this way. Solve let's, that problem? Let's hope, uh, let's hope we don't do what we're doing now for the next hundred years. Uh, General Petraeus turned the corner on this. Now, it's time to wind down in Iraq. Those people are ready for their own destiny. Uh, we do have a focus in Afghanistan and Pakistan and uh, in the Philippines. You know, so we, we have a world war on terror. It is there. But also, let's don't scare the American people so bad that uh, we overreact. You methodically systematically make an approach and deal with the problem. I was a sniper. And as a sniper, I never had to use it until one time. And that's in my book. And the time I used it, I had the calm to be able to use it for what I was trained to do. And it saved a lot of lives. So, hey, let's don't spook America. Let's get America concentrated on what we need to do. What needs to happen in this area to revitalize farming and agriculture? Well, it, it, you have to look at two things. Uh, during the Great Depression, my grandmother fed her family, 10 kids, on a five-acre plot. She raised peas, butter beans, tomatoes, squash, and she canned. So five acres, she supported the whole family. You know, if a guy wants to retire, a woman wants to retire, let him pull out a small plot of land, 10, 15 acres. You know, I, I like co-ops. I like co-ops because I like farmer's markets. In a farmer's market, you can go and get fresh produce, fresh peas, beans, uh, watermelons, whatever. And I believe in that. I believe in bringing back, and not only that, a lot of this land, when I was a child, Growing up here, we farmed 1,200 acres. Of course, we were sharecroppers. And I worked for another farmer, but he farmed 1,200. And today, that same farmer only has about 150 left. Mm -hmm. It's all been turned into other things. It and seems like small farms are a little more flexible as far as what they can oh, grow yeah. from year to year. Yeah. But they don't get the, the subsidies that the enormous Well, I'm, uh, I'm going get. for a push in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know... I'm not going to talk about my opponent about what he gets, okay, 
but a lot of the big farms do get money under the farm bill. The small ones don't. And they're disappearing. And they are disappearing. We have to have a focus, and there are six extension agents, in, you know, one in each county. And if those extension agents were given the opportunity and the resources to help the small farmer, they'd do that. Because I know some of them, and they're very good people. But they're bound on the laws they have today. So I push small farms as well as big. That could stimulate other... It could. It could stimulate a lot of things. You know, the farmer's market, I mean, we're here in Laurel Hill. If I want a gallon of milk, I have to go to Crestview, you know. When I was a kid growing up, if I wanted a gallon of milk, we had a dairy. You know, we had a local dairy that, and of course, we can't bring that back. But the farmer's market, we can bring back more plentiful, you know, and I think it would help our economy. What would you tell people? Uh, why should they vote for you instead of your opponent? Well, the most important thing, if you look at my background and, and all my experience, my entire experience, I'm 61 years old. Uh, I've got some good years left that I want to serve my country. And I want to serve in Congress for, the, for these years to help promote what I've talked about and to help to bring this district around to where my child don't have to leave here. You have a lot of retired military. They retire and they have to leave. Why not retire and have a job? And it goes as well not only for the retired military but other people. You know, young men and women coming out of the military, they should be a focus on putting them to work. When they come out, come back from the wars, I couldn't do that. I come back from the wars and I could farm seven bucks a day. I could cut pulp wood, you know, around here. But I had no job. All the jobs were gone. All the industry was gone. And we, the American people, let, them, let it slide right out from under our fingers. And now it's time to turn it around. And you mentioned that you're going to be based more in this area than based in Washington. Yeah, oh yeah, yes. Uh, Crestview is the middle of the district. The, the district is 140 miles across, six counties. And I'm best served by being based right around Crestview in that area, Crestview, Fort Walton, to serve the district to, from Pensacola all the way to Chipley. Chipley's got two beautiful little uh, industrial parks, and they need to be filled up. There's a lot of jobs there that could be had. So. Okay. Well, Mr. Bryan, I thank you so much again for the thank interview. Thank you. I, I appreciate you giving me your time. Whoa, whoa, back up, back up. Whoa, right there, whoa, right there. Baby doll is uh, five years old. And honey bunny, that's my other girlfriend. My wife lets me have two girlfriends. <laughs> Baby doll and honey bunny. I think they're safe girlfriends. Yeah, they're safe girlfriends. <laughs> okay, up, up. My sweethearts and uh, whenever I want to get away from all the humdrum I come out here with them you know and that makes my day